very important. Uh, Kim, uh, John Mann. All right. Thank you, John. And thank you, uh, Pro uh, President uh, Thierry Montreal and uh, his team and all the organizers for the uh, World Paris Conference, uh, especially including <coughs> Sang Yim. Uh, uh, I think this is an excellent occasion uh, to be uh, joining this uh, wonderful uh, team of uh, panelists. Uh, it's my first time to attend this uh, uh, World uh, Paris Conference, but it's really enlightening and informative. I think that's uh, something that I just want to uh, make highly of uh, what uh, I've been seeing. And I'm representing uh, the Federation of Korean Industries, so I'll, I'd like to share uh, with you all some of the business perspectives, uh, especially uh, uh, in relation to the increasing geopolitical risks and uncertainties uh, uh, across the Indo-Pacific. And increasing geopolitical uncertainties uh, precipitated the return of so-called economic statecraft. Every government is putting economic policy priorities linked to long-term national security interests. Intensification of U.S.-China uh, uh, strategic competition is leading us to be put under increasing pressure to choose between the two sides, particularly in relation to high-tech industry investment. And secondly, the shift has been necessitated by various forms of economic coercion uh, from China uh, and other countries, as well as examples of unilateralism that has been exhibited by the United States. And there are two uh, very fundamental questions uh, that CEOs uh, in the boardroom ask themselves at a deep psychological level. One is what kind of geopolitical risks is most relevant to business decision making? The first one. And the second one is does economic security, which is a kind of the buzzword uh, in these uh, days, so to make the business environment become an even safer or more stable one? There's two questions. Let me first uh, touch upon the first question. I think this, uh, first and foremost, uh, the most fundamental threat or risk that they are feeling uh, at the business uh, uh, dimension is the U.S.-China rivalry. It's uh, no doubt. This, uh, as U.S.-China rivalry intensifies the economic security, whether it's as a policy or the initiative or the even defensive reaction to what uh, is being uh, charted out uh, within the context of the hegemonic uh, competition, uh, the governments of big powers and even middle powers are trying to adopt more uh, kind of protective and sometimes uh, kind of fortification of his own uh, the economic structure. And economic security uh, is uh, bringing uh, not only just uh, uh, limited to controls on sensitive technology, such as high-end semiconductor production equipment, but also it is also extend into value networks, especially critical minerals and uh, rare earth minerals uh, securement. It could also expand into a building a broad industrial base, including products with uh, relatively few national security implications, such as electric vehicles. Let me just uh, cite one example, that is uh, Samsung Electronics. Samsung has been enjoying a quite a significant uh, kind of share of the market uh, in smartphones uh, up until 2016. It has been uh, on the top of the uh, market share. Now uh, it has been uh, gone down to almost 1% of the uh, market share in China. And Samsung has shut down, uh, withdrawn its uh, production plants uh, in two uh, important uh, cities in China. And they have uh, shut down the uh, TV manufacturing plants in China as well. So most of these uh, plants have been relocated to either to Vietnam or to India. So uh, India is now uh, having the largest manufacturing uh, plant of <coughs> smartphones. Uh, to be uh, run by uh, Samsung Electronics. So it's kind of the general relocation and realignment of the whole uh, manufacturing uh, facilities uh, uh, within the uh, Indo-Pacific uh, era 
uh, area, especially uh, when it comes to a certain specific company. And the second question is related with uh, is economic security really makes making this business environment a safer and stable one? My answer is not really. Actually, economic security uh, is uh, causing a lot of uh, increase in input prices and also instability sources uh, stirring up social and regulatory pressures on business. Widening geopolitical schisms are leading policymakers and regulators to structure and administer, administer their respective economies and business environments differently. Businesses are increasingly navigating administrative, logistical, and brand reputation risks. So rapidly inflating input prices are creating cost issues for business uh, and reduced labor flows are also forcing business uh, to spend more on uh, these uh, workforces. Lastly, I just want to uh, touch upon what Professor Yuichi Osoya has mentioned, uh, especially on uh, the improvement of uh, bilateral relations between South Korea and Japan. I do echo what uh, Professor Yuichi Osoya has mentioned. It's a, it's a bit of game-changing effect upon the regional uh, structure, uh, not only in the uh, security uh, and political realm, but also in uh, economic and trade uh, realm as well. So uh, one uh, kind of landmark example is the uh, Camp David uh, leaders meeting among South Korea, Japan, and the United States that was hosted by uh, President Biden in August uh, uh, this year. So that is uh, the first time ever stand-alone uh, trilateral uh, leaders meeting among three countries that has been uh, enabled by the warming up of uh, bilateral relations between South Korea and Japan. That's a very encouraging uh, point to end on, actually. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I was thinking, you know, uh, when you talked about how uh, you know, the, the spread of manufacturing from China has gone into Vietnam, etc. I mean, do you think that decoupling or de-risking actually is just, a, it's just a words which actually don't really have much practical effect except to make things perhaps more difficult at the political level? Is it a sort of an empty phrase that, that industry and your... You know, the, Korean businesses can simply ignore. I will get back to you later with this, uh, when the okay. first round is complete. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> uh